And as you continue to breathe, imagine with each inhale that you're filling up a balloon inside of your belly. <clears throat> As you inhale, that balloon inflates and your belly presses forward toward the front of the room. And as you exhale, that balloon deflates and your abdomen draws towards your spine. Inhale and exhale. Breathing in this way, filling and empty. Now, as you continue to breathe in this way, keep filling and emptying your belly. And begin to draw your breath inward. Bring it into your sinuses. And feel your breath in that space behind your eyes, at the top of your nose, between your eyebrows. And make a sound like the one you'd make if you were a little frustrated. Inhale. And exhale here. Continuing to fill and empty your belly. Continuing to focus on the movement of your breath. Continuing to fill and empty slowly. Deepening your inhales and exhales. Let your breath drop down even lower. Letting it come to the back of your throat now. With your jaw closed and your lips softly together, start to make the sound like you're fogging with me. Hear your breath inside your head and feel it filling the back of your throat and emptying from the back of your Continuing to fill and empty with your belly, use your abdominal muscles to help your breath move in. Now envisioning as though each inhale, each exhale, could be portioned into two parts. When you next inhale, take half a breath and fill your belly, expanding it fully. And then the second half of your breath fills your chest, feel it widen. As you exhale, feel your chest collapse, drawing into center, and then your belly draw to your spine. Breathe again, filling belly first, and then chest. Exhaling, empty chest first, and then belly. Continue to breathe in this way, filling from bottom to top, empty from top to bottom. Create a smooth flow, a rhythm of equal inhale to exhale. Breathe again. Exhale. And take another. Exhale. If your hands are still on your belly and you feel you've got this rhythm down, go ahead and release your hands to your thighs, continuing to focus your breath, moving through belly, chest, and chest. Go ahead and lower your chin down towards your chest. And then opening your eyes, gaze down upon your feet. And try to keep this two-part breath as you walk your hands forward. Separate your feet and come onto your knees. Move any tools that you used underneath you out of the way. And set your blanket up around the center of your mat, placing your knees on it. Stack your hips over your knees, making sure they're at hip-width distance. Stack your palms beneath your shoulders, setting them up with shoulder width distance, coming into table pose. Find your two part breath again, inhaling. Exhale. And then, no matter where you are in your breath, pause. Exhale. 
exhale all of the air out. And as you inhale, lower your belly down to the earth. Lift your tail, shoulders and gaze to the ceiling. Coming into cow pose. As you exhale, round your spine to the ceiling. Tail and chin tuck towards each other in calf stretch. Breathe again. Bellies down, shoulders and tails up. Look to the ceiling. Exhaling, spine to the sky, chin to chest and tail tuck. Again, inhale, bellies down, shoulders back, into your calf. Exhale, rounding out, spine to the sky, into your calf. One more time like this, breathing in, bellies down, tails and shoulders up, look up. And exhale, rounding to the sky, into calf stretch. Now this time when you inhale, lead with your tail. Lift your tail first, then lower your belly. Drop your chest, lift your shoulders and gaze up last. As you exhale, tuck your tail first, lift your belly, your chest, and then lower your gaze. Again, lead from tail, inhale, tail up, belly down, chest up, gaze up, exhale, tail tucks, belly up, chest lifts, gaze down, inhale, tail up, belly down, chest down, gaze up. One more time, tuck your tail, belly lifts, chest up, Gaze to your belly, and then lift your tail, lower your belly, lift your shoulders, lift your gaze. Now this time, drop your gaze first. Then lift your shoulders, lift your belly, tuck your tail. Inhale, look up first. Lower your chest, lower your belly, lift your tail. Again, look down, chest up, belly up, tail tucks. Now look up, chest down. Belly down, tail up. Inhale, come to neutral with your spine. Crown forward and tail down. Take a deep breath in here and let out a long exhale. On your next inhale, lengthen each leg back, extending your legs and coming onto your toes into plank pose. On your next breath out, lower your knees down to the mat. Keep your belly lifted as you bring your chest forward and down between your hands. And then lowering your hips and relaxing your feet, move your shoulders to the back of the room. Lift up into cobra pose, elbows squeeze into your sides as your chest lifts. Breathing out, draw your bellies to your spine, press your hips towards your heels, tuck your toes under, and lengthen your legs, lifting into downward dog or Cindy's variation, dolphin pose. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Inhale, and on your next breath out, let your right knee drop down toward the ground. Keep your left leg long and press your left heel away, lengthening through the back of your left leg. Left calf, left hamstring, getting a stretch. Take an inhale here, and a long exhale. Breathe again. And then as you exhale, switch sides. Let your left knee bend and your right leg extend, stretching through the back of your right leg, right calf, and right hamstring. Breathe here. Exhale. Take another deep breath. And exhale. Inhale, lengthen both legs, coming back into Akhla Mukha Svanasana. Take a deep breath in and look up towards your hands. And breathing out, you can take a walk or step your way to the front of your mat. Coming to Uttanasana, our forward fold, hands can be on shins, ankles, feet. You can reach the ground, go ahead and put them down there. Inhaling, everybody put your palms on your shins, lift your spine halfway up and gaze to the front of the room. Exhaling, go ahead and fold forward again, tilting a little extra weight into your toes to stretch through the backs of your legs a little more. On your next inhale, take your arms out to the sides and dive to the sky. Lift your head, body up, palms connect overhead, and then hands together down to your hands. In breath again, spread your arms wide, reaching to the sky, palms connecting. Exhale to your hands. And another deep breath, arms spread out and reach to the sky, palms together and down to your hands. On your next inhale, take your arms out and up to the sky. Let your palms connect and stay there. Take a deep breath in. And now as you breathe out, arch over to the right. Lean to the right side. You can bump your hips to the left a little bit if you want and make the letter C or a half moon shape with your body. 
Keep your feet rooted to the earth as you stretch over to the right. Now try to lengthen your arms equally and bring them back in line with your ears, which may or may not be so easy for you. As you do this, lift your sternum slightly towards the ceiling and draw your belly back towards your spine. Take another deep breath. Exhale, and again. Exhale, inhale. Now as you breathe in next, let your right arm drop down your right side. Maybe your hand comes to your thigh, to your hip, or reaches to your calf, I'll be impressed. Take a deep breath in and keep stretching to the right. Your left arm reaches over towards the entry side wall, and you're stretching through all ten fingers. Take another deep breath. Exhaling. Keep lifting through your sternum. Keep drawing your belly to your spine. Take one more. Now as you exhale, turn to your right side and fold over your right leg, coming down to a forward fold on your right side. Now the earth might appear as though far away as you fold to the side. So you can always grab a block to bring the earth a little closer to you so that you have somewhere to put your hand. If you can get your fingers down to the earth, feel free to reach down and ground your fingers into the earth. No problem. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale. Try to keep both feet equally rooted, each leg equal in length to its neighbor. Take another breath in. And then as you exhale, rotate to center and forward fold. You can bring that block to the middle with you. There's no rule that says you can. On your next inhale, put your palms on your shins. Lift your spine halfway up and gaze to the front of the room. As you exhale, hinge at your hips. Forward fold, reaching back down to shins, ankles, feet, the ground. Inhale, arms reach out to the sides and up to the sky. Dive to Urdhva Asasana. Palms connecting overhead, standing tall. Exhale, hands to heart center. In breath, reach out and up. Dive to the sky again. Exhale to your heart, and another deep breath, dive to the sky. Now keep your hands overhead once again, take a deep breath, and as you exhale, let's arch to the left, lengthening now through our right side. So I was talking to Craig, who's hiding in the back here, about back issues and getting stuck in forward folds and having back pain. And side stretches are really good for working on releasing tension through your back body. So think about how often in your day you go side to side. Probably like not much, right? We do a lot of forward movement. So as you hold this pose and you keep bringing your arms back in line with your ears and you're lifting your sternum and you're bringing your belly to your spine, hopefully you're feeling a nice stretch from maybe your right calf all the way through your right side body to your right fingertips. Keep breathing here and make minor adjustments to make that stretch maybe a little more uncomfortable so that you can address some of those tight areas in your side body. One more breath, just like this. And then your left arm drops down your left side as you inhale. Your hand can come to your thigh or your hip. Nice long right arm as your fingers reach to the left wall to our tool wall. Really work on opening through your right side body. Take another deep breath there. Exhaling and again. Exhaling, inhale. And as you breathe out now, turn to your left side and fold down over your left side. Go ahead and grab that tool. Bringing your block in your body to give you some support to bring the earth a little closer to you. Both feet remain rooted. Both legs long, continuing the stretch through your right side. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. So this is a preparation for a pose that I can't do but looks super cool. Mr. Iyengar was able to do it, where you literally would keep rotating and eventually hug your back of your legs to yourself. Just imagine that. Put that in your head and envision that happening. Take another deep breath. Exhale. On your next breath out, come back to center, bringing your tool if you want to, forward fold. I've seen photos. It's happened. I've seen them too. <laughs> <laughs> Inhale, palms up on your shins, preparing your spine, gaze forward. Exhale, hinge and fold back down towards the ground. 
And inhale, spread your arms out to the sides and up to the sky, palms connecting overhead. Exhale, hands back down to your heart. Take another deep breath, reaching through the sky. Exhaling to your heart. And again, a deep breath to the sky. And hands to our hearts. How are we feeling so far, you guys? Everybody good? Okay. Inhale, dive up to the sky once again. And then as you breathe out, open your arms, lift your hips, hinge and fold all the way down to the earth into Uttanasana. Oh, this is such a nice <laughs> Take a deep breath in, palms to shin, gazing forward. Breathing out, bend your knees and root your palms down to the earth. You can move your tool out of the way if you're using the block. Inhale, take your right foot all the way to the back of the mat. Breathing out, come up and over your toes and drop your right knee down to the earth, coming into a low lunge stance. Inhaling, dive your arms out and up, reaching to the sky. Make sure you relax your back toes. See how the top of Hannah's toes are on the earth? We want to make sure that our back foot is rooted down and out. Exhale, hands to heart center if you haven't already. Take another deep breath up to the sky, palms connecting overhead. Exhale to your hearts. And another deep breath, reaching to the sky. And palms together, bring your hands to your heart. So we got a nice little side body opening. Let's add a little twist to this action. Keep your thumbs glued to your sternum. And if you need to, go ahead and literally press your thumbs right into heart center. <clears throat> Try to keep your hips facing the front of the room. And on your next breath out, move from your belly, turning to the left, trying to get your upper body to face towards our tool wall. It probably won't turn all the way. We'll do your best. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Now there are a few variations. You're in variation one, where you're twisting and just working to use your breath to rotate to the side. If you'd like to try moving a little deeper into this posture, try to get the outside of your right upper arm to touch the outside of your left thigh. So as you twist, you're working to try and create this deeper rotation using your thigh for torsion to help you rotate further. Keep lifting up through your sternum, through your chest, and your shoulders move towards your spine. So as you take this pose, we want to keep trying to open up our chest as we rotate. Take another breath in. Exhale. Breathe again. Exhale. Take another. Exhale. And once more. Exhale. Now with your next out breath, rotate your face forward, but stay low. And then as you inhale, dive your arms to the sky and rise up tall. Bringing your spine upward and your palms together. Exhale, hands to heart center. Another breath in, arms dive out and up. We reach to the sky, palms connecting. And then as you breathe out, hands release down to the mat. And inhale, take your left foot back so you're in table pose. Everybody okay? Oh, you're going to get lip adjustments now. Take a deep breath. Exhale. And again. Exhale. On your next inhale, lift your left leg and extend it behind you. As you breathe out, bend your left knee, put your left foot on the ceiling. Beautiful. And then keeping your shoulders parallel to the earth, open up your hip, trying to put your left foot on your right shoulder. Notice I said try. Deep breath in. Exhale. Take another breath. Exhale. And again. Exhale. On your next breath out, turn your hips to face the earth once again and put your left knee down on the ground. Inhale here. Grab the earth with your toes, tucking all ten under. Lift your knees and press back into downward dog. Shins, gaze forward towards the front of the room. Exhale, fold back down to 
towards the earth. Inhale, arms spread wide, reach to the sky, palms connecting. Exhale, hands down to your heart. Take another breath, spread your arms wide, reaching to the sky, palms connecting. Exhale to your heart. And another deep breath up to the sky. Exhaling, open your arms, lift your hips, hinge and fold down towards the mat. Inhale, palm, uh, palms to shins, prepare. Pause your train of thought. Exhale, knees bend and palms root. Inhaling, this time take your left foot all the way to the back of the mat. Come up and over your toes and lower your left knee down into your low lunge stance. Relax your left toes. Take a deep breath and spread your arms wide, dive into the sky, palms connecting. Exhale, down to your hearts. In breath again, reaching high into the sky. Exhaling, down to your hearts. One more time, all the way to the sky. Exhaling, hands to hearts. Okay, so again, glue your thumbs to your sternum. And this is going to help us to keep that proper alignment instead of turning our arms but not our torso. As you breathe out next, turn from your belly, rotating to the right. Work on keeping both hips facing toward the front wall. Take a deep breath in. Shoulders move towards your spine. Long breaths out. So, of course, you can remain in this variation. It's lovely. It gives you 100% of the benefit. If you'd like to go a little deeper into the pose, try to lower your left upper arm onto your right helmet thigh. Breathe in here. Exhale. So if you find that your feet start to feel like they're out of balance, try lifting up through your thighs, engaging through your quadricep muscles, and also draw your belly to your spine. Never underestimate the power of your core muscles. They do a lot for us. We tend to ignore them often. Take another breath in. Keep working on lifting through your chest, moving your shoulders, Towards your spine and breathing. That's important too because this is yoga anyway. It's not a stretching class. We have to have breath and movement if we're practicing yoga properly. Take another inhale and all that other stuff right there. The seven, six other things. <laughs> Take another inhale. Exhale and again. Beautiful. Next breath out, stay low as you rotate towards the front of the room. And then when you inhale and dive your arms to the sky, lift your spine, connect your palms overhead, and hands exhale to your heart. Another breath, reaching high to the sky, palms connecting, exhaling, hands release down to the mat. And inhale, step back into table pose. Pause for a moment, hold your table pose for a couple breaths, inhaling. And exhaling. Take another deep breath in. On your next inhale, stretch your right leg towards the back of the room, lifting it off the earth. As you exhale, bend your right knee, putting your foot on the ceiling. And keeping your shoulders facing the earth and your arms long, lift your right foot over towards your left shoulder. Breathe here. Exhale. Take another breath in. Exhale. And again. Exhale. One more. And as you breathe out, go ahead and let your right knee lower down. And stay there in table for just a couple breaths. Exhale. Tuck your toes under, gripping the earth. Press your hips towards your heels, and then lift your legs and lengthen back into downward facing fold. Deep breath in here. Long exhale. How are we feeling? Back, sides, fronts okay? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Take another deep breath. Exhale. On your next inhale, come forward into plank pose, stacking shoulders over wrists. And then as you breathe out, come up and over your toes and drop down again into table pose. Swing your feet to one side and then drop your hips back behind you and come to sit. 
So again, when we come to sit, even with legs extended, use a tool in order to prop your hips up so you can sit upright. Coming into Dandasana, step pose. Take a deep breath here. So in proper step pose, our legs are extended at hip width distance. Our shoulders move towards our spines. Bellies are lifting us up, not those low back muscles that we use all the time. And we have our palms resting gently beside our hips. Take another deep breath. It doesn't seem like much, but you're going to get tired if I let you sit here for too long. Take one more. Exhale. All right. On your next breath out, bend your right knee, drawing your heel in towards your right hip. Again, another posture with loads of variations. This is one variation. Second variation is to cross your right leg over to the other side of your left leg. You can put it at your calf, you can put it at your thigh. So this is Matse Asana's twist. Evidently there is a sage named Matse Asana and he would like sit like this. That's what it feels like to me That's what I feel like. The further your right foot comes towards your left hip, the deeper the stretch gets. So you can keep drawing your heel back as you feel comfortable. We're going to work with our other leg extended today. Take both arms forward and give your right leg a big hug. Squeeze it in towards you and roll your shoulders back, lifting your spine. And you're going to keep your left arm around your right leg. So wrap your left arm as tightly as you can around your leg, hugging it in. Take your right arm towards the front of the room like you want to give Hannah a pat on the back for being such a good demonstrator today. And then breathe in, lift your right arm to the ceiling, rainbow it around and turn to the right, twisting. And either putting your fingers on the earth, or if your spine feels super open today and you want to have a little fun, wrap your right hand behind your back and try and grab for your left hip, coming into a gentle hop. Breathe in. Keep sitting as upright as you can in this pose. And breathing out, twist again from your belly, just as we did moments ago in our low lunge. Press down with all five toes on your right foot as you take this time. Make sure that there's some dorsiflexion going on in your left foot, lifting your toes to the ceiling and sending your left toe towards the front of the room. Breathe again. Exhale. Take it up. One more deep breath, you guys. Now to exit this pose, when you inhale, look towards the front of the room, adjust your head. And then when you exhale, gently unwind, turning your whole body to face forward. How's that feel? Everybody okay? All right. Uncross your foot first, keeping your knee bent, and then extend your right leg long. That just protects our joints. Now I should ask you how you're doing, right? Because now you're fully out of the pose. Take a moment here, back in Dandasana, palms gentle by your hips, belly drawing to spine to lift you up, shoulders moving towards your spine. Breathe in. Exhale. Take another breath. Exhale. And one more. Exhale. How about we switch sides and even things out? Breathing out, left knee bends, draw your heel in towards your hip. Same variation as the as other side. So if you had your heel in just at your hip, you'd stay there. If you had your foot crossed over near your calf, go there. And so on and so forth until eventually your left heel would come up near your right hip. Again, hug your leg tightly into your body. Squeeze it in and sit up nice and tall. And this time it's right arm that's going to hug left leg. So wrap it around tightly. Reach your left arm to the front of the room. Give hand another pat on the back. Tell her she rocks it. And then inhale, left arm lifts. Rainbow around and turn to the left, opening your chest. Left hand can come to the earth or bind to your right hip. Breathe here. Exhale. 
dorsiflexion through your right foot, making sure your toes are active, heel is pressing away. Press down with all five toes on your left foot. For some reason, that foot always wants to have a party. And your toes are like, woohoo, we're on the other side. Let's have this adventure. Keep them moving. Use your breath. Each inhale, you fill up just as we did when we began with our two-part breath. Each exhale, you empty in the same way. Deep Two more on this side. Now again, we exit in the same way as we did on the prior side, inhaling, turn to look at the front of the room with your head, and then exhaling, the rest of your body follows and you unwind to face forward. Uncross your left leg first, keeping your knee bent, and then inhale, extend your left leg. Back to Dandasana. Deep breath in. Long exhale. Take another deep breath. And exhale. Everybody feel all right? You ready for a nap? Yes. Dog is. Look, you all are sleeping. <laughs> Go ahead and scooch forward so that you can recline all Roll onto your back and give yourself a big hug, knees into chest, and rock a little bit side to side, or if you're into drawing circles on the ceiling with your knees, go ahead and draw some circles. Give your back body a little massage, revisit with your side body, check in how you're feeling. Two more breaths here. Exhale, and one more breath. Now come to center and let your feet come down to the earth. You have a choice of either an active bridge pose or supported bridge. If you'd like to do supported bridge, which is where you are, take your block and bring it in beside you because you'll want one. Walk your heels back towards your hips, keeping your heels rooted on the ground. And do your best to keep your feet at hip width distance. I know you can't see them, but think about where your knees are and try and get your feet Reach forward towards your heels with your fingers, and you might be able to brush the outsides of your heels with your fingertips. I said might. <laughs> Tuck your shoulders towards each other underneath your back body so that your sternum lifts a little bit, and you end up rising through your chest slightly. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, press your belly down into the earth. Feeling your low back lower down to the ground. Now on your next breath in, press into your feet and lift your hips off the ground, pushing them towards your face so that you're using your legs as best you can to press your hips backward. Then if you're going into active bridge, you can grab your hands beneath your back. You can hold on to your heels. You can try some fancy stuff. If you're going into supported bridge, take your block. Slip it underneath your sacrum and rotate it until your sacrum can drop onto it and be supported. And breathe here in your variation, making sure that that block provides support but not discomfort. Take another deep breath in and let out another long exhale. Settle into this posture for a couple more breaths, allowing your spine to release. So we did a lot of twists today, and twists do a bunch of things, right? They loosen up our bodies, they move them in ways.
waist. Here we don't usually move them. I don't know how often you guys are crossing your legs and twisting in the opposite direction during the day, but most people aren't. We created a lot of movement through our spines. And so through all that, what also happens according to yoga philosophy is that twists help us to remove toxins, to kind of twist and remove the stuff that we don't need, kind of like wringing out a dirty towel. And now we come into a bridge, a backward bend, a spinal extension, and also an inversion, which helps us create length and then also allows us to let go of all that stuff. So you might imagine you're just dumping things out into the yoga studio to be filtered and cleaned and made into nicer stuff. Kind of like how we newer grow gross flowers. <laughs> Take a deep breath in and up. Now, if you have a block beneath your hips, on your next in breath, lift your hips just enough so you can rotate that block down to its lowest level. So rotate it and then lower your hips back down onto it. Take another breath in. Exhale in. And then with your next in breath, in breath if you are on a block, lift your hips just enough to remove that block. Everybody untuck your shoulders and lower your spine slowly, one vertebrae at a time, down to the earth. So you can remain still here if that feels good. You might also decide the windshield wiper, your knees come side to side, just to bring a little awareness and release through your spine in the case that any tension is created through that posture. Is everybody happy? Yes. 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 Are you so serene that you can't even answer me? <laughs> so for Shavasana, our final pose, you're welcome to just recline on the earth, coming into a traditional corpse. Uh, for those of you that would like some spinal support, maybe some openness through your chest, you can go into cannoli roll variation. And that's where you take your blanket, and you borrow Patrick's here. You unfold it one fold from the shelf, and then roll it up from fringe to fold. And then you take that blanket, and you don't have to stay on this, but you're gonna for me right now. You put it behind you, and then recline your spine over it. You do a heart opener, and if you have any spinal tension, hopefully it'll give you a little release back. If there are any other variations on Shavasana that you've learned, or you'd like to attempt, feel free to go for it. Once you're there, if you like cannoli roll, cross your arms over your chest, lift your elbows up towards your forehead, and then open your arms and release them on the earth, palms facing up, come into a comfortable position. Is that all right? Okay, good. Let your eyes close once you've created a posture that feels good for you today. I apologize for any dog kisses. I'll try and keep her away from you if she's a bother. Return to your two-part breath. Breathing in, belly, and then chest. Breathing out, chest, and then belly. And if you'd like, you can create a dharmic focus for today. We've been practicing meditation. And our focus of late has been on the idea letting go of things that we don't need. In the Bhagavad Gita, it's the idea of not having a worldly focus. That might sound kind of lofty, because as yogis, we're supposed to have worldly focus. It's more so the idea of focusing on what you have serves you, what you can do that serves the world, without getting caught up in trying to be a part of everything. I think that goes pretty well with our common culture right now, where many of us suffer from FOMO. 
fear of missing out. And yoga says, don't worry. You're not missing out. You're just getting closer to me. So while you rest here, you can imagine on each exhale, that you just let go of some of those heavy, worldly things, the things you don't need. Just let them drift away into your sleeping space. Let them be filtered. Let them grow into more important things.
again, you begin to fill an empty consciousness with so deep a connectedness to non-accident. Imagine your own breaths, filling up your chest and your abdomen. You feel your out-breaths, emptying your belly and chest. Imagine each inhale spreading out into your arms and your legs. Imagine each exhale rising from your toes and your fingers. Imagine your breath filling you from the soles of your feet to the crown of your head. Take your next in breath and begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Open and close your palms, pointing Then stretch out with your arms and your legs and away from your body from its rest. Maybe now place your feet on the earth, bend your knees to the ceiling. Pause me here. Ground your knees to your chest if you'd like. Look within yourself. Recognize the peace during the contentment that exists there at all times. Exhale. Gently roll to your right side, your hands making a pillow for your head, and rest there, letting go of anything that remains that you no longer need. And then using your hands to help yourself rise, come back up into a seated position. Cross your legs in front of you. And connect your palms, lifting your hands up in front of your skin. Creating Anjali Mudra, our attitude of offering. Through which we offer peace. Within yourself, recognize peace, Om Shanti. Share that peace with others, Om Shanti. Create peace throughout our universe, Om Shanti. And may you recognize that we are provided by every person with whom you meet. Namaste.